Very nice spin. And there. And Brent. And Hunter. And Nikki. We scratched our names in that oak tree. Cause I loved you and you loved me. Jagged little hearts so the whole town knew it. Carved into the bark with an arrow through it. Well, I came out here to see you one more time. And I got my cane saw. Oh, you know it's got all those extensions of shame for you. Good morning, everyone. This is a celebration. Yeah, there we go, there we go. I, we want to make sure y'all are uh, alive and well, and it's good to, good to be with you this morning. I'm Gary Black, Commissioner of Agriculture for the State of Georgia, and it's real honored to be a part of this. And uh, welcome home, Secretary, and some good news today for your community in this region of our state on a very important issue. Uh, I, uh, in uh, looking at, the, I think, the importance of today and in in this, this subject matter, uh, I just, just finished a book on Edison and looked at the timing and 100 years ago right now, 100 years ago, Harvey Firestone, Henry Ford, Thomas Edison, and Boyd Austin were camping together. <laughs> it's good to see you, Boyd, this morning, but uh, seriously, they... Uh, uh, those three giants of in industry in America were uh, literally were camping. I guess that's what they did with their time. They talked about what the future might be. And of course, that's the father of the incandescent bulb and the phonograph and the lots of other things. And of course, Henry Ford used to work for him, uh, for Edison. And, and then uh, we, we all know what Ford Motor Company is. And then you don't run without Firestone tires, which gave way to you know, the search for rubber and, and basic materials. Uh, isn't it interesting, 100 years later, have we, we've conquered so many things, but we still have so many needs to meet this economy. So many challenges for families, so many challenges for businesses, and while we're in this, this 21st century global economy, the need for bro rural broadband is, is uh, we, we all are gathered here to celebrate a victory uh, but uh, it is our, certainly a work in process progress all across the country. Thanks to President Trump, thanks to uh, Secretary Perdue for the, the vision that we've had for this particular uh, uh, leaders of all over the country to make sure that we can reach out more and address this very pressing need for rural communities all across this country. We're really uh, a part of a, a very good celebration. Of, uh, it's all come home to us. It, we, we, we run into it from our agency every day from the standpoint of every license that we have now is online. Uh, all communications that all of us are doing, we, we're, so, uh, uh, we're so hooked into this technology as a, as a basic uh, part of basic sustenance of, of being able to do business. But in, in completing some uh, even recently with uh, our, our efforts with some of the relief packages with respect to agriculture, I, I've found, Mr. Secretary, that over half of our replies back on some of our online applications with block grants, we still have two gaps. One, we even have a gap of knowledge of how to use technology to start, uh, to start with. But then we certainly have rural broadband challenges of just being able to upload documents, little simple things that maybe many of us take for granted that, that make it difficult for everyday Georgians and everyday Americans just to compete. And so today, ladies and gentlemen, we gather uh, on this Reconnect Celebration Day 
to, to say that good news is coming to West Georgia. Good news is once again coming to Georgia through the efforts of, of our secretary and certainly from the leadership of the president. And, and uh, I hope we find that this will be an issue that all leaders everywhere can unite upon that uh, we certainly see to, need to see more days like this in the future. And we, on behalf of the Georgia Department of Agriculture, we're certainly glad to be a part of this today. I'm honored to uh, be Secretary, with, you sir. Said something about block grants. When are we gonna get our disaster money? Yes, sir. <laughs> your, your disaster money check. I'm happy to report, Mr. Secretary. Your disaster check was deposited in our account last Wednesday. We've had that those resources one week, and those first checks are in the mail today. They were processed today. Three hundred. <laughs> This, this is a this has been an, uh, an interesting adventure that we've uh, we've worked through and it's been good, but it's uh, finally our help from Hurricane Michael is on on its way. Uh, I am uh, happy to introduce uh, a very dear friend now to come to the microphone and uh, certainly uh, I just kind of harken back to we've we've been around in this uh, in this arena quite some time together. Uh, I was honored to be in the room uh, when the announcement was made that, ladies and gentlemen, the new president of the American Farm Bureau Federation is Zippy Duval. Uh, I, I, I remember uh, really yelling quite a bit on the floor of that delegate, delegate floor that morning in celebration. Uh, Zippy Duval is a uh, a reformed dairy farmer who is now has 400 beef cattle over in Greene County. Uh, but ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, we couldn't have a, a more passionate and the uh, Lord sent the right person at the right time to be the voice of American agriculture, the leader of the premier uh, uh, general farm organization in this country. So please give a warm uh, West Georgia welcome during this celebration this morning to the president of the American Farm Bureau Federation, Zippy Duval. It's good to be at home. It's good to be at home in Georgia and working from home in Georgia has been kind of nice. I hate the, the son of the circumstances this are, but it's pretty nice to be able to sleep in your bed every night, but I enjoy my job and uh, the uh, six million family farm members across the country that I represent uh, have been struggling very hard, very difficult times for them. And we know they're not, we're not alone that everybody's had difficult times, but there's brighter days and things are getting better and they're gonna be better. And I know that because I serve alongside of some wonderful friends that are over here to my right. So thank, thank you for having me this morning. This, this is a, not just a celebration, but a great step in the right direction. A right direction because it is um, so important this day and time. You know, I really compare what's going on with broadband and how we spread it across America to what happened to electrification. And, you know, what electrification was to my dad and my granddad and, and is, is broadband. runs our equipment out in the farm, uh, it also returns data back to our farms from that machinery so we can make decisions of how to plant, what to plant, where to plant it. It makes us more efficient. It makes us better stewards of the land. And it's shocking to know that only one out of four rule of just something that's a, uh, nice to have today. It's a necessity, not just for our farm, but for our children, for our health care. And how can we ever think that we'll send one of our children to a four-year college where he's got the best internet and think that he's going to come back home to a rural community and live the rest of his life? They're not going to do that. So to save not just farming and agriculture and keep us on the cutting edge, 
We gotta save our rural communities by making sure that we continue to spread this across America. So this is a great first step of us doing that. I'm so proud to serve uh, with uh, at the American Farm Bureau and being there at the same time with Secretary Perdue. And I'm so proud of him and his staff in this reconnect program, but there's much more to do and Congress needs to make sure that they pay attention to what's going on. We've done a lot of work on the mapping and make sure that the federal dollars go in the right place. We've done a lot of work with Congress trying to bring awareness to how important it is to make sure that broadband is there. If you think about agriculture, and I hear, I've heard Secretary Perdue say this, what sets us apart from the rest of the world is our infrastructure. And broadband is part of a, uh, a, a necessity infrastructure that rural America has to have to be able to stay a step ahead of the rest of the world. Infrastructure and research dollars are the key to keeping American agriculture leading the world as we move along. So we look forward to continue to uh, spread this across. There's a lot more work to do. We've got to make sure that Congress is, is there to supply the money to, to, for this administration and the secretary to continue to spread it. And then to have those great supporters in our state is just important. And that brings me to be able to introduce the next guest. And I think this is the first time I've got to introduce my friend as governor the 83rd governor of the of state of Georgia, and he's he come from agriculture. He understands agriculture. He's making a great governor of our state during a very difficult time. But his, his focus is not diverted by the difficult times we're going through. He's doing what he has to do to manage this difficult situation that we're in, but he's also managing the state. He see, he's just not just a hero for broadband and spreading it across America, across rural Georgia, but he's also a hero in, in their economy. Just this week, he announced a thousand new jobs coming to Georgia, or the, recently. And this week, he announced a broadband speed test pilot so that we can test broadband speeds across our rural, uh, 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 rural uh, Georgia. So. Uh, you know, to see a man in a very difficult time managing a difficult situation, but also focused on what's really important to Georgia, and that's growing our economy and making sure that everybody has a level playing field when it comes to being a productive citizen in our state. I, w I, w I, have, I take the honor to introduce our governor, Brian Kemp. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Zippy. Uh, it's great to have you and Secretary Purdue both uh, back home in Georgia. I'm certainly honored to be with you all as well as Commissioner Black uh, for this exciting announcement for the people of West Georgia. You know, I think it's pretty clear that we all have a commitment to help increase rural broadband access for economic growth, educational opportunities, and more importantly now than ever, healthcare access. And we've certainly seen how crucial that is in recent months for our families across this state. As uh, a lot of our schooling moved online, our telehealth visits have literally skyrocketed in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. I wanna commend whoever set the room up here today. I appreciate you continuing to follow the guidance and socially distancing yourselves. I uh, also just wanted to mention the, the Georgia Department of Community Affairs, which is no stranger to every county in our state. Uh, they have launched a new website and informed Georgians about ways to connect to high-speed internet throughout the state. I know Commissioner Nunn and a lot of our Georgia team is here today. I uh, really appreciate all that they have done working through the pandemic as well as Janine Miller and other people. Um, on this issue. And uh, I think we understand even more today how important it is. Uh, last month, we announced a great partnership and donation from AT&T to the Georgia Department of Education to deploy, to deploy 448 Wi-Fi Rangers to 36 different school districts, which helped fill the internet connectivity gap for thousands of students in rural Georgia, which tripled 
the number of Wi-Fi buses that we have in the state. So methodically, we are taking these steps every single day to continue to move forward. And this is certainly the case with today's USDA ReConnect grant. Um, this announcement literally represents the next chapter in those efforts to expand access to hardworking Georgians in rural communities that currently do not have that reliable connection. And all told, these critical funds will increase internet access to more than 200,000 Georgians, ensuring families, school teachers, doctors, first responders, business owners, our farmers and farm families, and countless others have the resources that they need in this quickly changing landscape. You know, this project is a direct result of the Trump administration's investment in infrastructure in rural communities. And I, I want to thank the President, I want to thank Secretary Perdue, and commend them for their leadership, not only in this project, but what they've been doing literally all over the country, as well as the small business owners of Dovetail and Sync Global who forged quite an innovative partnership with local leaders to bring high-speed internet to this region. I want to again express my appreciation to Secretary Perdue, Commissioner Black, and American Farm Bureau President Zippy Duval. I don't know of three other men that have hand on that issue very strongly. Commissioner Black was to continue and work with him on that issue last year when we moved some of that forward. So, Thank you all for allowing me to be here to celebrate this great day in West Georgia and to thank all our partners, especially the President and Secretary Perdue, for their leadership on this issue. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to our Secretary of Agriculture and our former Governor and a good friend, and I hope you all will help welcome home Secretary Sonny Perdue. Well. Good morning, everyone, and I'm also proud to see you recognizing the protocol of socially distancing, but I'm about ready for this stuff to be over. I want to hug your necks out there, so uh, I, want to, I want to get together and socialize and take these masks off so we can see those smiles uh, on all of our people. It's good to be home, and I, uh, I appreciate very much you all coming out, and uh, I'm going to recognize a few in the audience here today. I know uh, we're kind of in Senator Heath's uh, uh, territory over here in West Georgia, and he's been a good friend for a while. I think he's in the waning days of his uh, Senate career there. You gonna make it one more day, Senator? Yeah, all right, well, you, uh, good deal. And uh, I know just over there, another good friend, uh, former Mayor Boyd Austin there that uh, kind of wants to help out the state now. Boyd, it's good to see you here, and uh, I appreciate the friendship. Governor, you were talking about, you ran on this issue. I ran on it in 2002. And uh, it's kind of like block grants. It just takes a while, you know. <laughs> but I, I ran on this Connecting uh, Georgia in 2002 because it is a transformative uh, infrastructure just like uh, Zippy and the commissioner said. It has the ability to bring people together, and uh, that's what we're trying to do. Also in the audience is Joyce White, our Rural Development uh, State Director uh, there. And uh, you all recognize Joyce. Uh, who uh, faithfully served me in our, our office in term of governor for eight years. And Joyce, it's good to see you. You're doing a, a great job. You always had a heart for serving people, and I'm glad you're here. Uh, one other person we've returned to Georgia for the governor's benefit is someone who actually was at the genesis of this program, and that's Janine Miller. Where are you, Janine? Stand up here and uh, see there. She was actually at uh, USDA. and. Uh, helped design this program and then uh, went over to DOT to serve uh, Secretary Chow there and then has come back and is working with the governor now in his development. And your state people from uh, Chris and all the others, I'm glad that you're here today, particularly with uh, Commissioner Gary Black and uh, our good friend, uh, Farm Bureau President, uh, National Farm Bureau President, American Farm Bureau Federation President, Zippy Duval, uh, and uh, it's just good to, good to be home uh, for this event particularly. We've been doing these all over the country, but it's just like the old saying, there's no place like home. And we need it here, we need it everywhere. And I wanna thank uh, really the legislature and the governor for their foresight 
because what you know, these are competitive grants. They're competitive applications. I'll introduce our Rural Utility Services Director that took in multiple applications. The program was way oversubscribed, and they have to go through these and score these applications. So this is an earned grant competitively there, and I want to congratulate uh, uh, the, the teams here today. We'll talk more about them in a second. But uh, what the Georgia General Assembly, along with uh, Governor Kemp's leadership, did in 2018 with the, uh, uh, let's see, Connecting Everywhere, uh, there in 2018. In 2019, I think you sir, signed three bills, Senate Bill 2, allowing for our uh, EMCs to, co uh, to, to collaborate in this business, and then the other bills, Senate Bill 2, 17, and 66, which all dealt with broadband connectivity, and that's, uh, uh, you know, achieving connectivity everywhere was the global vision. Those three bills helped to implement it out, and they gained 20 points on a score Chad, you can tell us later how much that contributed to overall, how many points there were, but 20 points was pretty significant based on the state's uh, re response. Y'all may remember as governor, I'm kind of skin in the game kind of guy. So I like everybody to partner together, uh, not just to give money out, but everybody have a little bit of skin in the game and the state as well as the companies, the uh, EMCs and everyone to have a real effort in making this happen because it's going to take all of us. Uh, even the federal government doesn't have enough money to do this everywhere. And we're delighted it's happening here in, in West Georgia, uh, where it's sorely needed, and, but it's needed all over Georgia. You were talking about driving around Georgia, Governor, uh, you know, and, and learning distantly or whatever. Some places you can't even get a cell signal. And that's, that's inexcusable these time, in this day and time, because just like uh, Gary and Zippy said, uh, I remember, uh, my parents exulting over electrification. I think it came to our little community in Bonnier in 1938, kind of began with the REA in the 1930s, and that's almost 100 years ago. Today, we know this infrastructure of connectivity is just as important virtually as, as electricity, electricity and the telephony of uh, connectivity with our phone systems as well. So if we didn't know that before, we know it now, don't we, with the pandemic. Uh, with working remotely and not being able to gather, it just exacerbated and shows us how important connectivity it all is. It also showed us how cruel digital divide is. If you're a child at school's closed and you're supposed to distantly learn, how do you do that? How, how do you do that without connectivity? You can't do it. If you've got parents or grandparents that need to check in with a doctor in this period of time, how do you do that? You can't do that without telemedicine, telehealth in that regard. Uh, agriculture is a very innovative, many people don't understand how sophisticated and uh, innovative agriculture is today. Uh, Zippy talked a little bit about uh, some of the downloading of, of things in precision agriculture. I was amazed when I saw some of the demonstration of precision agriculture with good connectivity over sub-inch technology where you could put that tractor where it could guide itself within a sub-inch direction there, inputting half of the inputs down, putting the seed directly over there in that same one, coming back in the spring doing that with production increases, productivity increases, and decreasing inputs. That's real quantum leap of productivity in agriculture through precision agriculture. But guess what? You gotta have connectivity and you gotta have it not only in the houses and the, and the farmsteads, but you gotta have it in the fields. So that means everywhere. So what, what this program is doing is connecting communities, and I'm delighted to be here with Sink Global today to, uh, to announce this and their collaboration with Carol EMC in partnering that way. So, you know, if you have connectivity to broadband, you're one of the fortunate ones. There's 21 million Americans that don't have connectivity. And uh, if you think we've got some rural parts of Georgia, you ought to travel over this country. There's some rural parts where, you know, I was at a meeting in Nebraska and the, and the senator out there was Senator Debbie Fisher. And she said, I'd like to invite some of my neighbors to come. And I said, well, good. And so we got it up there in the barn. She's there and her husband are cattle ranchers. And she said, uh, so we're going to get our neighbors to come. I went out there and there were probably 50 people in the, in the barn there. It was snowing in May in Nebraska. And I'm glad I live in Georgia, but it was snowing in Nebraska on May 22nd, and there were 50 people there 
I found out the closest neighbors were 50 miles apart in those sand hills. So there are some rural parts of America that are uh, even more rural than Georgia, but it's, it's important to connect us. We think it's important for people that live in rural areas just for the sociology aspect that was also mentioned about coming to town or school and having, uh, you know, uh, hunter gig gig speed up and down and you think you're going to come back uh, to west georgia where you can't even get a signal that's not going to happen this is about rural prosperity and when the president the day after i was sworn in he signed the executive order for usda to study uh again this is one of janine's projects over american rural prosperity and agricultural prosperity we determined this was one of the foundational changes that we could do that would be transformative for rural prosperity. We think there are a lot of people in town that would love to move out in some of these beautiful areas of Georgia, including West Georgia, South, East, North, and West, that uh, they would be love to live there, but they may be working from home and they might need, uh, they might need remote connection, and they're precluded from doing that. They've got to go somewhere where there's connectivity. It's just like Mayor. Uh, how sewer lines drove development, you know. You got to have connectivity to the sewer line. You got to develop where it's there. You can't go out here somewhere and not have that. And you, you helped to develop West Georgia quite a bit in Dallas, Georgia, with that, uh, with that type of connectivity and, and go, growing smartly out here in West Georgia. But that's, this is exactly what that's all about, is that if we're going to help rural prosperity, we've got to continue to do this in a transformative way. So I'm very proud that uh, President Trump has recognized that, issued an executive order about this uh, very thing, and proud that Congress has helped to fund this Rural Connect program. They initially gave us $600 million that uh, it was divided into three tranches. 200 were just grants only, 200 were loan grant combinations, and 200 were loan combinations. All three of those categories were oversubscribed, but the good news is Congress reappropriated and now we're beginning in the second round. This is really one of the first announcements, Chad, in the second round here, uh, along with the $100 uh, million in the CARES Act funding was also there. So we've got uh, about a little over $1.1 billion to deploy, and we're just beginning the, the announcements there. There were some technical issues over the first uh, award. That, uh, hopefully we corrected most of those, and this is a result of uh, those uh, understanding more about the program and some flexibility that was afforded by Congress in order to uh, to do that. But this is going to move into modern day type of uh, of technology. Even in many places, fiber to the home, which is uh, easily 100 gig up, 100, uh, 100 meg up, 100 meg down, which is really city speed. And we wouldn't have to back up in rural Georgia or rural America in order to achieve that. So uh, it's a $12.5 million uh, Grant and Sync Global Telecom, who's going to deploy the high-speed broadband in rural Georgia, and we're proud to announce that today in collaboration with their partner, Carol EMC. With this investment, Sync Global will connect 7,348 uh, 7, people, 121 farms, 15 businesses, four fire stations, one elementary school to high-speed broadband in Heard, Troop, and Carroll counties. So. As I indicated, today's announcement is uh, special because it's the first announcement that's being made in conjunction with the $100 million available in the ReConnect through the CARES Act, additionally to the other $1 billion. And so for those of you who don't know, uh, this helps to provide uh, much needed resources to uh, our American citizens, businesses, and communities in light of the pandemic, which really exacerbated or showed us how much connectivity is needed. And I want to thank Chad and our people at the Rural Utility Services in Washington. I want to thank our state directors for helping uh, uh, companies and groups to, uh, to understand the program and help guide them through that. But just in two short months, USDA was able to collect these applications, evaluate those applications, and invest those critically and incredibly important funds in the rural communities who need them most. So we still have 1.1 billion governors, so I hope many of your other communities in Georgia will be looking at uh, these, uh, uh, this uh, application as well. And I look forward to announcing more of these critical investments found from round two and from the CARES Act in the coming weeks around the country 
but I always love to come home to Georgia. So we're going to continue. The USDA is going to continue to work in the direction of President Trump to ensure all Americans have access to high-speed broadband connectivity because we know when America, rural America thrives, I believe all of America thrives, Zippy. And I, I don't, it's an honor to serve with the president. I don't know how a boy growing up in Queens, New York, has such an affection and affinity for farmers, ranchers, and rural communities, but he does. And he lets me know on a regular basis, sometimes at 6 a.m., sometimes at 11 p.m. But if he, if he sees something on his mind, he calls, and I answer. Thank you. God bless you. I'm going to introduce Chad Roop. I mentioned to him, Chad runs our rural utility services out of USDA Rural Development, and uh, he manages this program. He and his team manage this program, and he's going to tell you a little bit about the specifics of the what we're actually going to get here in, uh, in West Georgia there. So, Chad, come on, tell them the real story. Well, good morning. Thank you, sir. Along with President Trump, your leadership and vision is once again realized here, and it, it's wonderful that we can do the first announcement here in Georgia. I think uh, Georgia actually has a special place in my heart. I uh, was under the uh, opportunity to fall into a bunch of sawdust pits down in Fort Benning several years ago. <laughs> so I went through airborne school. So. Uh, I'm glad to be back. It's a little bit different scene, and I'm, I'm glad to not be handling my term in a uh, sawdust pit in Fort Benning right now. So this is wonderful. Thank you. This uh, opportunity is really uh, a wonderful opportunity for all of America. Uh, the specifics to this award, Sync Global has worked with Carol EMC in a prime example of how to do business. One of the biggest issues we have is how to get the uh, issue overcoming capital investment to such dispersed area. And by using this model, they have been able to deliver on something that's been needed for a long time. So they're going to be receiving about $12.5 million in, in grant. They are also contributing, as good partners do, $4.1 million in matching contributions. As a result of that, specifically within the area that we are funding, they're going to be running high-speed gig level service out to about 2,700 households, 121 farms, 15 businesses, four fire stations, and a school. And I think that that really tells a great story in delivering on what the President and the Secretary see and what is desperately needed to return what was the best economy in my lifetime back to where it needs to be. Uh, you know, we've unfortunately had to be dealing with this pandemic, and we're grateful for Congress for the $100 million in additional CARES Act funding that we received. And this $12.5 million helps uh, begin the process of awarding those announcements. I have a lot of very hardworking government employees who are out right now throughout the United States working on uh, finding out whether or not there is service in these areas who have applied. We received 172 applications for $1.57 billion in round two on $1.1 billion that's available. And so we're actively working very hard to deliver on that, and we're trying to coordinate with our federal partners and other uh, federal agencies to be able to be good stewards of taxpayer funds. So our folks are out there right now uh, in the middle of this pandemic working with uh, the people who have not only uh, subscribed for awards, but have also challenged these applications. And so they're out there doing uh, the strong work that the President and the Secretary have asked them to do to deliver on this. So I'm very grateful for everything they're doing. And I'm grateful for our state directors, our 47 state directors throughout the United States who are uh, working just like Joyce is here in Georgia uh, to be able to be good partners with folks like Janine and, and other folks now with the, the state of Georgia to be able to uh, find those good opportunities and deliver this, this critical infrastructure. This is something that's going to allow for precision agriculture, advanced manufacturing, and opening uh, new markets for small businesses, as well as telemedicine is so critical today and, and distance learning. I'm from rural Wyoming and I've got kids in school and uh, our school shut down and they uh, started back up a few weeks after that so I had to go out and uh, have my wife buy the kids each a, a computer and my wife had to work from home for a while. So 
it is important. Um, I understand rural. I'm from rural. I understand how critical this is, and, and uh, that's why I have such an affinity for Georgia. Uh, great people here, and I uh, and, and very much appreciative of this opportunity that the uh, Secretary and the President has offered us to be able to deliver this critical infrastructure. This is a great time for America to rebuild in a very strong fashion, and I firmly believe in having uh, good partners with the state uh, offered 20 points total out of 150 towards the application by having uh, all the leadership that they've entailed and providing that partnership between these two organizations. And then additionally, building fiber out to homes. A lot of people talk about, you know, why are we not just doing wireless by itself? We're technology neutral, but the fact of the matter is, when you can invest in fiber, it lasts longer. We are investing in quality, infrastructure for the long term by doing this type of structure. And I firmly believe that giving the uh, gig level service the priority by uh, allowing more points towards an application by doing that, that's the right thing to do. That is being a good steward of taxpayer funds. And I think uh, it's a model for other folks to follow. And so I'm very pleased and I, I take pleasure in, in uh, recognizing Kyle and, and uh, Carol EMC for partnering. So I'd like to take this time to introduce Kyle right now and have him dis uh, discuss a little bit more of, of his project. But um, thank you for what you're doing. This is a long time in coming. And I'm glad that we were able to get things worked out. So come on up, Kyle. Thank you. Well, I've got to begin by giving thanks. And uh, it, if uh, you'll bow your heads, I'd like to start with a prayer. Dear Lord, you, you know our hearts, and I, I truly Thank you for this opportunity to serve our community in such a meaningful way. Thank you for our passions, our future. Thank you for the USDA, RUS. Thank you for Secretary Purdue and our governing officials leading initiatives, bringing broadband to rural America. And thank you for our country. I humbly ask you, Lord, to be with us, to lead us, to continue to bless us as we serve our community according to your perfect and perfecting will. In your name I pray, amen. To say this has been a long time coming is an understatement. Um, this particular program, I have a picture here when we were in Secretary Purdue's office back in 2018, um, and that was before the 2019 Reconnect program started. I know you can't see that, but this project really started 20 years ago. Um, I'm from here. This is home. This is family. This is community. This is, this is where the Lord has placed me. And I went to college, Georgia Tech. Um, and when I returned, there was no meaningful employment for what I had studied. Uh, and the Lord used that to see just a deep passion for home, family, and community. Um, it's hard to depict what I'm, what I'm saying it to someone that's not from a rural America where everyone knows everyone. You know your families. You're a part of the community. You, it matters what you do. It, it matters where you go to church. It matters where you go to school. It, it matters if you show up to work. We all depend on each other. And um, I believe that's the heart of America, that spirit. I have two children now at Georgia Tech, and I wholeheartedly want them to have an opportunity to come home. If we keep our families together, we keep our community together, we keep our culture together, and we keep our community together. So this project, to me, is about bringing America back to, to, our, to rural America. There's nothing necessarily wrong with the big cities, but bringing our people back where we have a sense of family, integrity, and culture are important. And it's not going to happen without the missing utility being available everywhere. Um, 20 years ago, we started building Sync Global here at home. And we served hospitals, health care, businesses. There, there, there was no other option. There was nothing here. And uh, we did everything but serve homes. We knew homes were the missing ingredient, and we stayed the course of focusing on that effort. But we really needed the right partner to help with that. 
And a few years ago, we aligned with just that partner. And of course, that partner is Carol EMC. They share, they completely share our same passion. This is our home, we're about our people. And um, when we started working together, we, we named our efforts Project Place to Be. In our hearts, we know this is the place to be, but we wanna transform our area back to being the place to be. And we focused on a common goal just to eliminate the digital divide that's been plaguing our area. We want service everywhere in our hometown, in our home area. That's a, that's a big undertaking. I, that's huge. That's over 40,000, way over 40,000, close to 50,000 of us that live outside of the cities in, in, in our area. And if you can imagine having fiber to your home, there is no difference if you live downtown Atlanta, New York, your connectivity, your ability for you to work from home, to manage your businesses from home, the quality of life, the communication, the staying in touch, the being on top of things, whether it's a pandemic, whether you've, you've got a, a job and you can't travel and now you can still function, whether you're a developer, gonna develop a neighborhood, you won't do any investments in an area that doesn't have this missing utility. But when we have it with what we already have that the Lord's given us, we'll truly be the place to be. So it is. As Secretary Purdue is saying, it's a transformative move, and we would not be able to start this wonderful project. It's going to be so meaningful to us without Secretary Purdue and the, and the, and the USDA and the Rural Utility Service believing and investing in us. And we were the first applicant to complete an application in 2019, so Secretary Purdue wanted everyone to have skin in the game. We feel pretty skint because we had to reapply. <laughs> <laughs> well. Thank you, everyone, and at this time, I, I want to introduce Tim Martin, the president of Carroll AMC, because this is truly a partnership. Thank you, Kyle. Um, you can see why we want to partner with St. Global uh, with leadership like this. Um, and I, and I'm, you know, we have a lot in common, Kyle and I. You know, we're both people of faith. We care about our communities. We care about our families. and. We, um, we're both Georgia Tech grads, and I know that probably concerns you a little bit, Governor, but I've got a daughter who's at UGA, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, I, I just want to start by thanking our, our board of directors at Carroll AMC. Um, uh, most of them are here today. Um, uh, we wouldn't be able to do this without their leadership and vision. Uh, in 2015, um, they tasked me with finding a way to get uh, broadband into to our members into rural West Georgia. Uh, they recognized the need and they said, we've got to find some way to help with this. Um, and so uh, they said, this is, one of your, this is one of your top priorities. And along the way, it's kind of become my top priority, I think. Um, but uh, it w if it weren't for their leadership and vision, we wouldn't be here today. And um, we uh, funded a, uh, the first big thing we did was we funded a broadband feasibility study in 2016 through the, uh, Greater West Georgia Joint Development Authority. And what that, um, what that determined was is that the need that we were hearing about was real. Um, two thirds of our members did not have access to broadband and I don't believe it's much better today. Um, and so it also said that it would be a good idea for Carol EMC to find a broadband partner. Well, fortunate for us, we have a partner right here in our very backyard, someone that uh, um, is going to work with us. We really believe that this project is going to be a springboard for future projects for West Georgia, and it can be a model, I think, for this state and for around the country. So we're honored to um, uh, be partnering today to be recognized as this. We really appreciate uh, Secretary Perdue, uh, Administrator Rupp, uh, the Trump administration for your commitment to helping solve the rural divide, one community at a time. You know, it reminds me of the, 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 uh, the boy that was throwing the, sea, the, uh, you know, the uh, starfish into the sea, and you know, there was a big pile, and they said, well, somebody came along and said, well, you know, you're not gonna be able to save all those starfish. And he said, well, it made a difference for that one. You know? So we're not gonna be able to maybe solve it all, but if we can get some momentum going, I think we, could, we can do this. I mean, we're America. 
we can do this. Um, so appreciative for Governor Kemp for his unwavering support for rural Georgia. Uh, thank you so much for our friends and our new friends that have come out today to support us. Um, really exciting. I mean, this is just a great day. I think we're going to look back on this, and I think this is going to be the best money that the federal government's ever spent. Uh, so thank you for the speakers. Uh, thank you, um, uh, Randall Redding and, and Steve Bennett and Milltown for hosting this event today. Josh McCorsley for the great food, and I thank you again all for coming today. And Kyle, I don't know, I really don't know who I should hand the program over to. Is that Secretary Perdue? So thank you so much, Secretary. Well, it began with calling this a celebration, and I think that's exactly what it is. We've heard very eloquently from our implementation partners here, Kyle and uh, Carol EMC, over uh, uh, their excitement about this is going to change lives in West Georgia. It's going to make development out here even more, uh, uh, more amenable to uh, bringing companies in that uh, remote companies that may work for home. It's going to be a, a big deal. It is a celebration. Governor, I want to thank you for your foresight in, uh, in the legislature and passing and signing these bills that uh, contributed 30 points to this. I want to thank uh, Gary Black, our Commissioner of Agriculture, understanding the value of rural American agriculture to Georgia and to the country, and certainly to our friend uh, Zippy Duval, President of the American Farm Bureau Federation. It's been a great uh, celebration. Kyle, uh, I appreciate your prayer. Also, as a person of faith, God made us where that skin grows back, so thank you.
Check. Style on the boom mics there. I'm using a uh, <laughs> socially distanced that way. <laughs> okay, good morning, everybody. I think y'all heard inside, so we won't have any opening remarks. Y'all can just fire away. What's the, what's the goal? The goal is connectivity everywhere. That's what the uh, uh, ACE Act was about in 2018 achieving connectivity everywhere. This is part of it, you know. Connectivity is a little bit like a rain shower. It's not a flood everywhere. You got to do it in, uh, in little little pockets overall. USDA is collaborating with local partners, in this case, uh, St. Global, as well as Carroll EMC, to bring uh, high-speed broadband connectivity to West Georgia for about seven over 7,000 people. It'll change their lives. That's what it's really all about. It's just the same effect that electrification had almost 100 years ago. Because in today's world, uh, you can't run those cameras and communicate with your station without connectivity. And that's what it's about, is having, uh, resolving the digital divide where it, uh, rural people can have access to the same kind of quality of life that we can uh, in, in cities where we have the connectivity. Secretary, as you mentioned, you've been working on this for a long time. This yeah. has been, this is not a new problem. Yeah. Um, in your experience, is this the way that we're going to change things? This, I mean, patchwork kind of grants like this, or are there, are there structural things that you think need to happen? I know the president has a vision of uh, more infrastructure uh, globally in that way. Uh, we've got uh, a lot of challenges. It's expensive. Uh, the federal government already spends a lot of money. Uh, we're fighting for a rural uh, America in this spectrum sales so they can get their share, obviously. And uh, we've got these things built out. As you know, in the private sector, they're going to go where their best uh, chance for profitability is. So government does have a role in helping to be, build capital investment in areas, and then it can be sustainable by subscriptions out in rural areas. I think one of the things, too, that was interesting to me was the president of the EMC talking about that this is just going to create great opportunities for HAP model, uh, model for other places, not only in Georgia, but around the country. Because it's going to be good in so many different areas, and we've seen that through the pandemic with telehealth, telemedicine, like the Secretary mentioned, economic opportunity, getting people that want to move back to rural parts of our, our state and our country. And this is just a way to help speed that up. So while it may be good for, you know, over 7,000 people today, it may affect, you know, 20,000 in the next five to 10 years uh, because of economic development prospects and other potential growth. It's foundations for rural economic development. That's what it is. Just like I mentioned the sewer today, if you don't have it, companies nor people are going to come because it's expected there to have uh, connectivity today.
Right, but if it's still not profitable for these companies without federal money. You know, Many maybe. times a capital investment, it's like a lot of projects where government participates on the front end. We've done it here in Georgia in developing maybe some areas uh, in North Georgia earlier and uh, then turn it over to private sector to operate. So the capital investment uh, is, is sustainable, particularly partnering with EMCs that already have uh, the, the connectivity to the home and part with the right partnerships, it'll be sustainable. They just need a little bit of help on the front end from a capital investment perspective. You could also build that model where it would make sense to be profitable. I mean, the problem now is you're putting the, the risk that you have financially for 7,300 people, but if, you, if the model works out where in a decade it affects, you know, 20,000 or 50,000 people because of the growth and the opportunity that comes of it, you know, then you start making that case from a private sector perspective of the initial investment to start with. Okay, anybody else? Mr. Secretary, you talked about a little bit from the podium about precision agriculture, and that's, that's good for row crops and things yeah. like that. Uh, how might this benefit the livestock guys that are, that are really popular around here? Well, interestingly, I've been to uh, robotic dairies where they have to have connectivity with these RFID tags. It shows when a cow wants to be milked, um, they milk uh, on demand by their own demand there. They can go and open gates and uh, go into robotic milkers when they have connectivity. It also shows the uh, early detection of uh, disease through uh, the quality of milk there that goes up and re be reported back. There are many ways. The, uh, the EMC guy was just talking about having a board member that does precision agriculture and black-eyed peas that sprays only the noxious weeds there rather than broadcasting uh, uh, pesticides over the whole field. And uh, obviously from a sustainability standpoint, that's important. Yeah. Uh, Governor, I uh, wanted to talk to you about the budget for a second. Uh, are you satisfied with the cuts that have had? Let me, let's finish up for our own topic and see if any else, and then I'll let the, okay. you know, I don't want to talk about the budget. I did that for <laughs> a year. Uh, Put in your time. Let, yeah, let's, let's talk, get any other I'm on, on topic. I'm going to refer to Secretary because he has so much uh, <laughs> experience with that. Understood, understood. Any other on topics? I, I guess is the, is the majority of federal funding that's coming to Georgia, is it going straight to rural, or mostly going to rural areas? Well, in this in this program it is, but no, there's a lot of money coming for the, the state to decide where those in hospitals across the state. Obviously, rural hospitals are challenged, but uh, this is going to help, I think, rural hospitals with telemedicine as well, being able to serve their, their patients in a new, different way. So the money's getting distributed over uh, the wisdom of the Governor General Assembly about where this money goes, but there's nothing dedicated special that in rural, in USDA, in rural development, that's for rural areas. You got to have a certain population to do that. Anybody else? I'm out of here. D budget time. <laughs> All right, I'm answering one question, and I'm out of here. Um, I feel really good about where we are on the budget. We've had a great partnership with the House and the Senate, uh, the Lieutenant Governor, the Speaker, uh, Appropriation Chairs, Tillery, in, in England. Um, the numbers, you know, have continued to move in our direction. So the cuts, not as much as we originally thought, which I'm thankful for. The letter I put out the other day uh, specified uh, some of my priorities um, to uh, help a little bit further from the, the cuts with uh, putting some additional money into education. I know we've been working with the General Assembly on the health care piece and then we're certainly uh, continuing to focus on public safety. We know how important that is. And lastly, we've really been working hard to look at projects in the bond package and otherwise that can restart our economy. Uh, we're going to have a press release coming out, it, it may already be out, um, about some tax incentives that we have to help existing Georgia businesses weather the pandemic, but also for us to have the ability to support Georgia companies and others that may want to move operations here that are uh, making PPE and other critical pandemic health uh, for health care issues. Governor, I have to ask you just about that.